and say thank you, Warden. Jumbo friends, my name is George and I'll be spar guy for the next two weeks here out in the reserve. As I said before, please watch your hands, arms, feet, legs, whatever else mate, you can stick out of the vehicle. Please keep them inside the vehicle no matter what. And please stay seated no matter what as well. You are allowed to take pictures and videos on the safari, but please hold on real tight to your phones, cameras, or whatever else you may take pictures with. I don't really know what else it would be. As we cannot go back for any lost, dropped items. And I also don't really know how, how well a zebra or a giraffe will take to having a phone or camera on the, on the road. Wouldn't be the best treat, I'm sure. We're currently heading into Little Aturi Forest. Here you might be able to see some animals who use their stripes as camouflage. If you watch on your left here, you're going to spot some bongos. They're going to be the darker, more brown ones. And up, up on the hill, you can see them standing away above them. It's going to be the greater kudu. That's the second largest antelope in the world. And right over there on the right is going to be an okapi. Okapi, while male they're wearing the pants of a zebra, it's actually more closely related to a giraffe. You can tell because they have that prehensile tongue and the same skeletal structure as a giraffe. Those, those bongo, the ones with the horns and the, and the darker color, they're known as the ghost of the forest. They get that nickname because they're really good at hiding and those horns on top of their heads will actually help them come through any bushes, trees, or leaves that they can walk under here in the forest. The Okapi, the animal right over there on the right, they were actually so good at hiding for so long, Westerners did not know about them until about 1901. For a long time, we thought they were as uh, as mythical as Bigfoot or a unicorn. Can I get some quick thumbs up if it's anybody's first time in the safari today? Got a whole lot of thumbs up today, wow, that's rare. Keep your eyes peeled on the left, my friends. We may be able to spot some black rhino over here. Look over on this cliff side right here. You can spot a black rhino laying down. Black rhino are about 3,000 pounds. But there's only about 5,000 of them left in the world. Certain cultures believe that their horns hold medicinal value. But their horns are made of keratin, just like your fingernails or your hair, so that's just not entirely true. You may notice his jaw was a little more angular. That's because he, he's going to be eating more out of trees and bushes and stuff like that. If you look over there on the left, my friends, you can spot a saddle-billed stork. Their wingspan is about nine feet long, so if you look up at the canopy above your head, it's about the length of that. You can tell which one's female, which one's male, because the females will have yellow eyes, the males will have brown eyes. And instead of any kind of vocalizations, they actually use their bills. They rat they rattle their bills out to communicate. and their canine teeth can reach about 18 inches long. And instead of swimming, what they do normally is they kind of graze their feet along the bottom of the water. And they're actually, they're actually herbivores, so they only eat plants. So you can see one coming up above the water right over here. I barely see them coming up. They do only come up about every five minutes to take a breath. If you look on the left, you can spot more behind that log right there. 
And they actually don't eat very much. They only eat about a third of their body weight. And these whitish gray birds over here on the logs, those are called pinkback pelicans. Those pinkback pelicans only get the pinks on their backs whenever they're in mating season. And whenever they do have a mate, they're going to be mates for life. They're also colonial nesters, so they're, so they're colony. It's going to be about 50 to 100 each bird. truck up ahead to move across that bridge. So it's going to be a similar or a little bit shorter length to the canopy above your head. Over there, my friends, you can spot some Nile crocodiles. They can get about 16 feet long and 500 pounds. And in just one sitting, they can eat half of their body weight. So if you're a fully grown 500 pound crocodile, you can eat about 250 pounds. While their jaws are very powerful, they can also be used very gently. That means whenever they're, whenever they're young and getting ready to hatch, they will roll around the eggs in their mouth to help them hatch and get, and, and get out easier. If you stand a fully grown one from the tip of its tail to the tip of its snout, it'd be about as about as tall as some of the smaller giraffe out there in the in savannah. Heading into the savannah, it's just taking us a minute. And my friends, if you look up as well, you can also be able to spot that animal spotting guide. So if there's any animals I just happen to not see and you see them, that can help you identify them and figure out what it is. And if you have any questions about them, you can also play telephone up to the front and I can try to figure out the question and get some answers for you. Straight up ahead of me, gonna be on your right in just a moment, is gonna be a baobab tree. It's actually a really interesting story about this baobab tree, one of my favorite stories about them. It's a creation story, so certain cultures believe that the creator thought he had everything in the world perfect, so he flipped those trees up over his shoulder. When he did, they landed with their, with their roots sticking into the sky and their leaves sticking into the ground. And they also hold tons of water inside them, and when they got the nickname from that story, the upside down tree. They hold tons of water inside them, they have a very spongy exterior. And due to how much water they hold inside of them, they have, they have another nickname called the Tree of Life. So animals like elephants or rhinos can actually stick their tusks and or horns inside of it. It'll help them get water out whenever they get thirsty and help them keep, keep hydrated just like we should as well because it gets way too hot out here. So remember always to stay hydrated, even now if you have to. Savannah is a very, eco, very beautiful ecosystem. It's also very fragile. So if one small thing go, goes out of place, the entire, the entire savanna has a chance of collapsing. And it's one of the more recognizable ecosystems here on the reserve as well.
You may notice that some of that grass is getting a little long right now. The wildebeest are actually out here sometimes. They actually kind of act as the natural lawn mowers. So if you do see them, you may notice that they will be eating the grass for the most part. If you look way over there on the left, kind of behind that bamboo over there, you can see the African painted dogs. They're, they, they lay down for the most part. They're my favorite animal here on the reserve, and they they have the name painted dog because they kind of have a splotchy pattern on them. Each of them have a, have a, a unique pattern. They have an 80% success rate in the wild and of their hunting. They get that because they hunt as a team. And whenever they do hunt as a team, if anyone gets sick, injured, and or hurt, they will go back and help them out. And instead of barking, they have a more squealing sound. So if you're used to your, your dogs barking at home, these are not gonna be like that. They're gonna be squealing. These pillar structures up on your right and left here, those are gonna be called termite mounds. Those termite mounds, they're, they're, made, they're made from termites, but they're also made out of out of mud, saliva, and dung. Over time, they will harden up, and when they do harden up, smaller animals can use them as a perch, and larger animals can use them as a scratching post of sorts. Peeled on the right currently, my friends, you will spot it. Way out in the distance over there, you can see some wildebeest, and way up close is going to be a heart and mountain zebra. You may notice those horns in that, in that little clearing over there, those are being coley cattle. So, heart and mountain zebras, you can tell what kind of zebras they are because they do not have stripes under their bellies. The stripes on their legs are actually a lot wider and thicker than other, than other zebras. They also have that dewlap under their chin, nothing regulate the body temperature. And the Ancoli cattle, while their horns look very heavy, they're actually very lightweight. Because they have a honeycomb structure inside them, so if anything, it, it'll help them regulate the body temperature. And way out there where you see, where you see the, uh, the wildebeest, mm -hmm. you may recognize them from, from a very niche movie called The Lion King. You might be able to recognize them, I'm not sure. Wildebeest in Afrikaans, which is a, which is language that derived from Dutch, it actually means wild beast. And whenever they migrate, they migrate in groups of 1.5 million. And the migration, and the movie The Lion King was actually a really accurate, accurate representation of their, of their migrations. It's called the Great Migration whenever they do migrate. And walking up towards us is going to be a Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffe have very jagged spots. They also all have that prehensile tongue. And they're also all 16 to 20 feet tall. You can go spot them on right up, right up, straight up ahead of me. I'll be walking on your right in just a second. The 
uh, another one on the left over there, walking up on the hill. <laughs> Giraffes actually, they have a purple hue on their tongue because whenever they're, uh, they spent most of their day eating, they, they spent about, I believe it's 20 hours in a day eating. And that purple hue on their tongue will help them keep from getting sunburned. If you look over on the left, my friends, you can spot some more Messiah giraffe over there. on the left of you can spot some mandrels over there. Mandrels are the largest monkeys in the world. Our adult males can reach up to 100 pounds. They also have little pockets or, or pouches in their cheeks that will help them hold snacks in, in their cheeks whenever they get hungry in the later in the day they can eat those snacks. They have very vibrant colors on their faces whenever they get excited. Those colors will brighten up. Whenever they bare their teeth, that's actually more of a friendly sign than an aggressive or dominant sign. But some of the only monkeys that actually have that. Most monkeys, whenever they bare their teeth, it's kind of an aggressive, I'm gonna fight you sign. On your right and left, my friends, here you're going to be able to spot what's called red clay pits. Red clay pits are actually what elephants will be eating for nutrients. You can see some pretty fresh tusk marks on the wall over there on the right. So what they do is they scrape the tusks on the wall and they eat it. Those look fairly fresh. You'll be able to spot some elephants coming up ahead and look on your left right there. You can spot an African elephant. You can see that his ears are kind of shaped like the continent of Africa. And he's kind of waving his ears back and forth. When he does that, he does that because he has, he has blood vessels on the inside of his ears. And those blood vessels, whenever he wet, uh, flaps his ears back and forth, it'll help him cool him down. But no matter how many times he flaps his ears, he will always remain flightless. baobab trees here. You can actually spot baobab, some more baobab trees over in Epcot in the, in the land, in the land, living with the land, is that right? And I believe there's also one at Fort Wilderness, the resort here at Disney. Keep your eyes on the left 
my friends we call them greater flamingos. Greater flamingos will be a lot larger than the other flamingo, but they'll also have less pink on them. They do get the pink from the brine shrimp to eat. The brine shrimp have something inside them called beta carotene. The more brine shrimp they eat, the more beta carotene, the more pink they get. As you can tell with some of the younger ones, they do not have many or, or much pink on them at all. If you look closely, I've never been able to figure out what it is, but that island has always had a really weird shape to me. Keep your eyes way out to the left so you can spot some white rhinos laying down over there. White rhinos about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds. And a, group of, and a group of rhinos is called a crash because they have very poor eyesight. You may notice their jaws will be a lot larger than, larger than the other rhinos we saw earlier. That's because they're browsers, so they'll be eating food up off the ground and more, more often instead. You may notice that mud pit over there in the middle. That's because whenever rh rhinos have very sensitive skin, so they'll roll around in the mud and they'll be able to keep their headlock as a natural sunblock so they don't get sunburned. Cheetahs are the fastest land animals in the world. They reach up to 60 miles an hour in just a few seconds. When they do reach those speeds though, they will, they will only keep them for 100 yards because they're more spinners than marathoners. They have that black tear marker under their eyes to help them keep the sun out of their eyes when they're hunting during the day as they're the only big cats to hunt during the day. Right up ahead of me, you can spot an ostrich walking on the road. They are the largest birds in the world. They, are, they also the, have the largest eyes of any birds and they also run the fastest out of any birds. And a little fun fact, their brains are way smaller than their eyes. We're gonna go poly poly behind these ostrich here because we don't want them to hit us and poly poly means very slow. Here. 
look over on the left, you can spot some warthogs laying down over there. They look, they look like little hairy rocks laying down. Okay. Warthogs reach up to 35 miles an hour. They're very closely related to domesticated pigs. They have, two, they have two sets of tusks. One lower in their mouth and one higher in their mouth. The ones that are lower are razor sharp. And you might have noticed back there on the right there were there some ostrich eggs. Ostrich, ostrich eggs are the largest eggs in, of any birds and they're also very, very durable. So if you or I were to stand on top of them, they wouldn't even crack. Currently heading into Magadi Glen here. If you look on top of this jeep and on top of the hut over there on my left, you can spot some Nigerian dwarf coats. Nigerian dwarf coats are actually really good for the environment because they're much smaller than other goats, but they produce the same amount of milk. The milk they produce has a lot of nutritional value for humans and it's also very sweet as well. If they ever spot any young ones playing around, that's actually the building up dominance whenever they get older. All these Nigerian dwarf goats are very cute. It's also very important to remember that people take care of them, put a lot of work and research in making sure they're comfortable living here. So if you plan or have adopted any animals, like cats, dogs, birds, lizards, or maybe even goats, if that's up your alley, something you can do is put a lot of work and research to making sure they're comfortable living with you and you are comfortable living with them. Most importantly, they're comfortable living. If you do not want to adopt any animals, something you can also do is just Recycle any old plastics, cardboards, or electronics. Those electronics especially because they have something something called coltan. We mine that coltan out of the habitats we saw here today, like the African elephants and the African painted dogs. The more we mine that coltan, the more those habitats shrink down, so it's much smaller than they should be. The less space those animals have to live and be free and happy. Another option you have is just donating to the Disney Conservation Fund. That money, like 50 cents or a dollar, can go a long way. And if you want to see more animals today, you can go over to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Or Gorilla Falls Trail, or over in Asia, you can go to Maharaji's Jungle Trek. There, you may see more Southeast Asian animals like tigers. But here in Harambe, we do not believe in saying goodbye, it's far too final and far too sad. So, instead, what we say is Paharini, which means go well. So please, once we unload, my friends, go well. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please do come up to my lack of windows so I do not have any windows. And let me know. Hi, my friends, my heart. Please wash your hands, arms, feet, and legs. Those doors might be opening very shortly.